Hey everybody, welcome back to the FSI DFS NASCAR Pick Shows for the Xfinity Series. I'm your host, MegaRuler31, and um, if you watched the truck race last night, very frustrating with the weather, with the, the cautions, and just, it's it very, very choppy though. Um, Zane Smith, I did um, have an outright bet on him. DS, DFS wise, lost a little bit, but um, did bet Smith the win and um, came out good there, so... Uh, we got Xfinity race coming up today, so I'm going to try to bang out this video quick. Uh, we're going to watch qualifying, watch the practice sessions, um, did some deep diving, so it's up on your screen here. Just a reminder, if you want the full package, we've got a great uh, feature for you on FSI DFS. If you go on and put NAS Feb free, you get a free week. So um, that will cover, you know, the Xfinity race, the cup race, um, and you know get you into our, our discord and all the extra uh cores and, and stuff like that so uh looking at this xfinity race um pretty exciting uh lots of changes this year in xfinity and again i think um i did have somebody put a a comment out there about you know going over like the teams and stuff and uh, i think i'll work on doing that coming up um for uh, california i think uh for the truck breakdown and the Xfinity. I don't know. I didn't look at the schedule to see if the distance between um qualifying and um and and the race. So if there's not enough time to do like a video, then maybe I'll just do kind of a, like a preview video. I'm not sure if all three series are even out there or not. Um sometimes the trucks take a couple weeks off before they they come back. So my guess is probably gonna be Xfinity and Cup. But anyways, you know, we'll, we'll definitely get some breakdowns and I'll, I'll try to cover a little bit of the team aspect in this video here. But let's just jump into it. So uh if you didn't watch these videos before or if this is the first time you're playing Three rules we've been saying over and over and over again for this speed week is, first of all, dip your toe in the water. Don't go all your bankroll because it's um, it's a high um, variant sport. And with these uh, tracks like Daytona and Talladega and even Atlanta now kind of becoming a super speedway, uh, just the variance is so much even higher with um, good cars going to get taken out very easily and not even be in their fault. So. Um, that's one thing. I don't think we have to worry about any start and parks here because you had to qualify to make this race. Um, maybe further on in the season for trucks and Xfinity, there might be some guys without sponsors that just go and get the paycheck or ride around for like 10 laps and then pack it up, call it a day and just like take the money and move on to the next race. But doubt we have to worry about here. So rule number one is play light. Rule number two is you want to chase place differential and not necessarily any fast laps or laps led because they change so fast here. Even if um, there's 120 laps here, even if one car leads all 120 laps, but I doubt that's really going to happen. It's not going to amount to as much as it's going to uh, I feel like it was a short track where you have like 400 laps and, and those laps like really go by quickly and add up quickly too. And fast laps like are spread out throughout the whole field too. It's not necessarily a leader that um, has the fastest lap. So not going to chase that. We're going to look for place differentials. So that's why you see so many fades up top um, for DFS. Usually most people stay say for like cup wise, you want to start 20th and back uh, again with like trucks and Xfinity. There's kind of a different uh, disparity between the different types of equipment from the different teams cup. It's more parity because the cars are designed. So like anybody can pretty much um, buy one, put one together. If you have like 400, 500 extra thousand dollars laying around um, to, to field a car. So Xfinity, it's a little bit different. Some of them are borrowed parts, second parts, like, you know, used parts, things like that. So that's rule number two. And rule number three is don't try to use all your salary on DK. Uh, if you need to leave some money on your table, that's absolutely fine. There's been times in uh, which we call plate races, which are Daytona and uh, Talladega uh, on the super speedways where I've left 10, 20 K on the table and had a really, really good lineup. So if you like your lineup, don't try to get another high because just as you have the money, just set it and, and move on. And the fourth thing we're, we're going to talk about a little bit here is um, in GPPs is team stacking. So looking up top here, uh, Austin Hill, he won Daytona last year. He won Atlanta, which is similar to a super speedway now. So he's really good at this type of racing. Rage Childress Racing is also uh, Sheldon Creed starting fourth. Like both of them are going to be really good here. They're probably going to work together as um, 
as Chevys, but again, they're starting too far forward here. So I just really um, don't like it. This um, actually Parker Klingman in the big machine racing also is, um, is a subsidiary of uh, Ray Childress racing or like they have like tech help and, and stuff from them so i could see hill Klingerman, Cree. they probably all had like the same setups for qualifying and they'll probably work well together and they could all if um you know they don't wreck do pretty well in this race but again you have so much um potential to lose so many points if they don't starting so far forward that they're super super risky to play so i'm just recommending that you fade them if you want to bet one of these guys to win the race, like maybe put like $5 down on them, I I'm cool with that. I think the junior motorsports cars are going to be the strongest ones here. But I definitely think that um, Richard Childress and Big Machine Racing are definitely ones. Um, Jay Buford, who's starting 12th, would also be uh, another one there. Those four cars are probably going to work together. Maybe they'll work with the JR cars or the Cully cars. The one thing that they found out from watching practice is if you try to get like 14, 15 cars together, it doesn't work as much as like seven, eight, nine cars. They can keep more compressed, less space between them, and they can go faster than we try to get like all the Chevys together. So we'll just have to see like what kind of um, Chevy groups work together. But um, I think ideally if uh, Childress Big Machine and uh, Junior Motorsports all work together, that'd probably be the most elite group, but we'll see what transpires there. So Austin Hill, a fade. But um, good driver could win the race. Parker Klingman, same thing. Cole Custer is coming down from the Cup Series. He's um, Stuart Haas racing. Uh, kind of taking a step back. And John Hunter Nematek and some other drivers have done this recently. Uh, maybe moved up a little too fast. And now it's a chance to get back down to kind of uh, get some little bit more learnings down here before he moves back up to the Cup Series. Sheldon Creed, same thing, um, has had some bad luck on these tracks, so that's why, just don't look at my DK projections here, because it takes about four races before they're really dialed in for the season, but I just, I'll, I'll leave the sheet for you. The one thing that we're really looked at um, is like DNF rate, and if you look at the columns over here, you can see their average running position at Daytona 22, 21, 20, their track type average, and then qualifying. I didn't put any practice information on here just because I really noticed that people weren't practicing out there for speed. They were practicing out there for drafting, for pit stuff, different things, different scenarios and stuff. So those numbers were just absolute garbage. They're just trying to get a feel for the car, get some tech things out. So I wasn't going to put those numbers into any of my formulas or equations so uh justin allgaier um definitely could win this here um seems to have average running position in like the 10s or 11s um average finish of this type of track is like 16 he's raced 24 races here he's had six top fives 10 top tens but he's only finished two thirds of them. So has a little bad luck, but not super, super bad. Um, so definitely a lot of experience. Daniel Hemrick, um, Collie cars used to run really well here until they kind of expanded into a cup and kind of spread themselves out a little bit too thin. But um, I think, you know, actually only fielding two full-time cars and have kind of an all-star car this year. I think maybe that'll help Hemrick a little bit, but Hemrick, before he won the championship and, and moved the um, colleague was like always like the bridesmaid, never the bride. So he's probably going to finish second. I wouldn't bet him to win. Um, that just seems to be his history. John Hunter Nemechek moves up from the truck series into Joe Gibbs racing. He spent a lot of time in a Toyota last year up here in uh, Sam Hunt. He ran a couple of Gibbs one. He returns in the 20, which was Harrison Burton's car. So uh, there's no longer a 54. So it's probably um, the 54 team moved to the 20. I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. But I, that looks like the most logical um, thing. But they, they probably just redispersed all the resources between the 18, 19, and, and 20 from the 54. And the 18 was an all-star um car last year now this year it's sam smith and now the 19 is the all-star team so um where you're gonna have a whole slew of different drivers from joe gibbs and different um young guys come in and just cycle through that car week after week so uh but john hernie check full time here up here uh Ran really well in the truck series up here. So I, I think he could do well also, but I think he's still a little bit too close to um, he'd be like the last fade here just because he's he had a lot of bad luck last year. I just want to see a couple races up in Xfinity to make sure that bad luck hasn't followed him. Chandler Smith, I, I've always equated to 
um Brandon Jones, who's in the series, and Kyle Bush, the boom and bust. He's going to win the race or he's going to wreck, like be the first guy out. So he's coming up from the truck series. He's in a colleague car, probably work with the other Chevys. I think he's a GPP, but uh, he's raced twice at Daytona, 15th average running position, one top 10, and he's finished all the races. So that's why I'm a GPP and not a fade. Riley Herbs, I think, is a good plate racer. There's not many great Fords in here. Uh, Custer and Herbs are definitely going to work together, but the rest are like the Ryan Sieg and Green Light Racing, which are okay. But then some of the other Fords here, like, um, are not as good, like Emerald and Gase. I really don't see them drafting or like really having superior equipment or maybe even making it the full race. So just if they figure out like working with like a Chevy or maybe the Toyotas, cause there's not many Toyotas here. Um, if, if those groups work together or, and the cars line up well and stuff that could go well for him. I, I really like Riley Herbst, but again, he's another guy that has a lot of bad luck. So he's GPP. Anthony Alfredo. Wow. Has he fallen? He came onto the scene about 2020, um, ran a limited Xfinity races, um, did well. I uh, used to call him like fast flying pasta, um, moved up to the cup series. Didn't do well. Came down to Xfinity's last year was in, um, our motorsports, which, uh, when TK and I did videos, we just talked about how they like, we were really excited that they expanded to three teams. They had him, they have Jed Burton, and they just really seem to overextend themselves. Now they're down to one team and Alfredo has left and gone to BJ McLeod. I don't know if there's any like different tech backing or another BJ McLeod is a, is a nice small organization. He's got a couple cars out there in Xfinity and he, you know, drives for himself up in um, the cup series. So he's got a lot of experience, but the equipment and the the stuff just isn't like the greatest compared to some of the other guys up here. So I don't know if there's a backing from another team or not. Uh, I'll have to look deeper into that, but I just, with the history of BJ McLeod cars, I just think it's going backwards. And that's why Alfredo's fade and Alfredo um, even come back down to the Xfinity series drills because kind of struggled as a driver. So um before I put any money on him or start playing him DFS, I want to see like some consistency out of him in this program. Brandon Jones moves from Gibbs and takes over Noah Grayson's team, who was um, the cup champion last year, or not the cup champion, the Xfinity champion last year. And um, like did really well, won a lot of races. Uh, Brandon Jones, again, hopefully working with these guys and working with his team and something will kind of be a renaissance for him because he's bounced from like team to team. Um, recently, I believe he was RCR and they spent a couple years with Gibbs and now he's like, you know, in his um, third team in uh, junior motorsports here. The guy's got talent, but again, he's just very volatile. Uh, 14 races, so he's got a lot of experience at Daytona, two top fives, four top tens. Um, you know, he's finished over two thirds of them. So that's good. But again, he's, he's one that could wreck very, very quickly and make the wrong move. Jay Buford, um, big machine. I'm so glad that he's back because he was around the 48 consistently. And then big machine racing decided it was going to be an all-star run a ride and Xfinity. And a lot of cool guys came and and ran it um, last year, but now he's back there. It looks like they're going to field two cars. Um, I don't know if he's going to get a full-time ride here or they're going to rotate guys in, but at least he's getting another chance because he, he did really well. He's starting to, far forward here if this number five big machine car was starting in the 20s love them lock them in gpp here can't really play him myatt snyder he's filling in the all-star carts for um, joe gibbs he raced really well actually when he was at um junior motorsports and um what was it junior motorsport to rcr one of the chevys um but anyways he was actually working with the chevys even in this toyota in practice and actually doing quite well um hooking up with some of the other guys that he's raced with in the past so uh you know he could have a very solid day gpp here but again starting a little bit too far forward the first guy i'm considering for cash is sam Mayer because he's got a junior motorsports car and i think you know that they can get up there and um lead and actually stay out of trouble and hopefully finish all the four of their cars in the top 10 so i think you know if he at least gets up to fourth that's 10 place differential points that's decent floor for cash sam smith again he's coming up as as a rookie, I'll check my note on him here. 
no, there's no note. Um, so again, he hasn't, the reason his projections are really bad is because he really hasn't raced that much um, at, at Daytona. So uh, hopefully Joe Gibbs has a lot of faith in him. Um, he's run some ARCA, I believe. Same thing with uh, Parker uh, Retzeloff, who's right behind him. The uh, colors here are, are, are the rookies. So uh, this is their first full year in here. Um, both these guys, I think, are GPP because, again, lack of experience. Uh, Smith definitely has the better um car jordan anderson racing um they've actually expanded this year and they bought out some of the r motorsports so they're going to have two or three cars that they're going to be fielding at some points this year so again and they're actually working with um a m racing which is um tommy joe martin's old outfit so I, I think that they could have good things this year but again there are a couple tiers below um the JR Motorsports, their children's cars and big machine racing, if they're all like have the same tech and the Joe Gibbs cars and colleagues. So they, you know, they're, they're definitely fifth, sixth, seventh, like down the line. So, uh, so GPP there, Cesar Baccarelli um, is here for Alpha Prime Racing, which is um, actually, I believe they're the Tommy. Yeah. They're the ones that from Tommy Joe Martiners, um, and they're actually pre- partnered with Brandon Built Motorsports. With sixty eight, doesn't have sponsorship, and and Brandon, um, unfortunately, is not in um, Xfinity. But hopefully, they'll get that figured out, and he can find a ride um, going forward. So Caesar again, not really good results. I. He's almost a fade here. Like, just look at the numbers. 36, 29, 24th average running position, uh, 35th. Like, he just 10 races, um, 70% DNF rate. That means he's only finished three out of 10. So uh, I think he's definitely I'm, – I'm going to move him to a fade here because I just think that's – those numbers are bad. So Josh Jerry, first prime play. Prime player, my core plays here. And JR Motorsports, he could get up there and definitely win this race. He's done really well. Uh, three Daytona races. He's finished two out of three of them. 20th average finish, but you can't really look at that. Guy runs really well. The whole program runs really well. He's improved so much in his um in his third year here. I think he's really gonna gonna take off with the rest of the junior guys. Um, and definitely he's somebody that I put money to potentially win this race. Justin Haley steps down from Cup. He jumps into the Cully car. This is gonna be an All Star car. Uh, this year the ten. So um, he is actually ranked fourth in my model. Um, two wins here at, at Daytona and Xfinity. So I, I think he definitely knows what it takes, does well at cup racing. So, and I think he'll be very, very popular. That's why I don't have him as a prime play because I like these other three guys better. But I think if there was a fourth, I'd consider him. Jeb Burton moves to Jordan. Anderson Racing was in our um racing team he left colleague i believe it was um or g g i don't know sorry i i don't have my team charts in in front of me from the last couple of years and that's why i miss tk because he, he knew all this stuff really cold but um i think it was, it was gibbs maybe then went to Cully. but anyways he moved to our motorsports he's just been kind of declining in like the quality of equipment that he's been in and now he's in jordan anderson who bought out like some of these guys from our racing this was the 32 car last year jordan anderson ran the 31 and jordan anderson car actually has the speed it was decent when jordan anderson wasn't trying to drive the car and do all the pr and all that publicity and stuff and race at the same time so that was actually a a formidable program and then they added the 32 and had like two cars and the 32 did okay so how's jed burton gonna do here i'm not sure but just with his experience that he's had um he's got three f- top fives in seven races he's only he's finished six out of seven of them so definitely some consistency here and being able to um finish the race so he's one that definitely i think is one that we can look at um playing in cash brandon pool it's a gpp jd motorsports again they're probably down the rung in uh in teams they really want to field four or three full-time teams this year they've got two of them figured out but the zero they don't have a driver for yet so i don't know this may be spreading themselves too thin it seemed like 
Landon Castle drove for them and did really, really well in like one of the cars. And it's always like one of the cars was really good and one of the cars was was not as good. And then they'd like flip numbers just to try because that one car would have more points and just try to qualify both cars and play games like that. So I don't know. Jury's out still here. GPP not um, starting 21st. I'm not um, playing Brendan Poole in cash. Ryan Sieg's doing the same exact thing. He normally drives a 39. This is probably the 39 car with a 38 paint job and sponsorship on it. Uh, the reason that he's not driving the 39 is they wanted to get Joe Graff Jr. into the race. Joe Graff Jr. probably wouldn't have made it in on speed by himself, but the 39 having enough um, owner's points would definitely make the field. So Ryan C. got the 38 in by speed. The 39 got in on, on points. Might have gotten in by speed also because they're starting 29th, but the, the plan definitely worked. So Again, the number really doesn't matter. He'll be back in the 39, and then Joe Graff will probably be in the 38 next week when they're in uh, California. But, again, there's not many Fords, but he hasn't been bad on plates. Like, I got him, like, ranked 14th overall here. 18 races, so a lot of experience here, 44%. So it means he's probably finished, like, 10 or 11 of these races, but three top fives, six top tens, does really well. Um, 11th, 18th, 13th average running position, 18th overall on his track. He's starting 22nd, so that's at least four place differential points. I think definitely you can play him in cash. Greg Galding is another one that I kind of want to wait and see on. He's a driver that usually ends low 20s, high 30s. So I can't really trust him at starting 23. He's a little too far forward. Jeffrey Earnhardt, Alpha Prime Racing. He um, full-time comes from um, Emerling Gase Racing. He's filled in a lot, and now he's actually got a full-time ride here with Alpha Prime, which is kind of exciting. He's a decent race car driver, you know, definitely related to the Earnhardt family, so definitely has um, the racing DNA, but he's definitely not the same level as Dale or um, Dale Jr., but, you know, we'll see. Here's a chance in Xfinity. He's a lot of experience, 12 races. He's finished um, more than half of them, but usually in the 25s. So he'll probably finish around where he starts, maybe a chance to stay clean and, and move up a little bit. So he's okay in cash. Josh Williams, uh, TK and I loved him a couple years ago. And then he just like spiraled down and he got um was on a good team and then went to a lesser team and then went to probably the worst team he could possibly and now he moves back up to GGM which is who was with last year saw some consistency he's running the whole season um and if you look at his numbers like 15th in in 2020 overall running position but 33rd 27th out of 11 races like he's only finished like nine of them or nine of them he'd only finished like four or five of them so again, he he's a little bit risky here. I don't think this is a track really to play him on. Kyle Sieg, same thing as um, you know, his his brother Ryan Sieg. It's it's a decent program. He does okay. He's raced twice at Daytona, average finish of 20th, and he's finished both of them. So I, that's a cash play for me. He can move up a little bit, um, six to ten place differential points. Blaine Perkins, same thing. Um, two races, finish both of them. So he's definitely somebody that I, I feel safe playing. And David Starr, this one also, like he, he had a top five. So he, he and our motorsports, like they're putting everything into this this one car here. Um, they've gone for three teams to one. And again, they're planning to try to fill field of 23 but um still looking for a, a driving solution for that one but i think david Starr is a, is a decent driver and i think that probably go low owned people will probably take people are further on down here but i'm okay with him in cash joe graf jr i think he's very too volatile i can't believe that sieg is giving him a ride here and i can't believe that i saw that he's going to be driving like the 19 in a joe gibbs car that is just completely scary i can't believe we got a cup ride last year um for some of these because he just and he's not like 
Ricky Stenthouse or Ross Chastain or some of these like really aggressive guys, he just makes mistakes and wrecks a lot of cars and causes a lot of wrecks. So I don't know. Maybe this is his year. Maybe things turn around. Maybe having the better equipment will help him. We'll see. But I'm not going to pay for it. GPP. Bailey Curry is another one that I think that you can um, trust. Again, JD Motorsports. I don't know how these cars are going to be. Sometimes one's really good. One's really bad. Um, but I think, you know, starting back here 30th, that he definitely can uh, move up and be okay. CJ McLaughlin, not interested in um, GPP. He usually finishes in the 30s. So, Again, he could luck box like five, 10 place differential points if there's a bunch of crashes ahead of him. But I'm not super sure that the equipment's great or that he's the a good driver here. So I'm not super interested. Brett Moffitt, probably going to be very popular here. Very, very good driver. Um, five races in Xfinity at Daytona. He's got a lot of truck experience at Daytona. Uh, one top five, one top 10. 60% DNF I rate. Um, again, he was in some bad equipment sometimes but this AM racing that formed this year which is um tim self and austin wayne self from the truck series uh are expanding and they're going to have this team and you know austin wayne self starting 32nd you definitely play him with a driver the quality of brett moffitt i think he's definitely well in play here um probably a really good play down here but i like kaz Grala. kaz Grala, Ran uh, Daytona the Cup last year. He's run twice in Xfinity, two top fives, average finish of 4.5. Um, I think that might be Cup data. I don't think that that might not be Xfinity, but uh, he's had some really good success at Daytona, and he's starting way back here. He's in a Sam Hunt car, which is a very good car. Um, Toyota will probably work with the Gibbs cars. Um, they'll probably link up together and, and help them out with spotting and you know and and drafting and all that stuff. Parker Chase, the same thing. Uh, like Kraz Gralis, so much more. Parker Chase is um brand new to this. Uh, only ran Daytona and Arca. He started third and finished second in my notes here. So you know, but again, he's got a lot of good experience. Um, guys to work with joey gase or actually ryan ellis alpha prime in this 43 car is again i i just i think it's playable but i just kind of looked at some of his like history here he's only finished one race out of the two so I, there's other guys who want to play but i know a lot he'll have like ownership because everybody will try to stack all these back cars and and not play anybody up any higher and and you know in 20 max all the combinations of 20 through 38 and, and he'll be in multiple ones of them um i'd rather take gase gase is um 17 races 29 percent dnf rate that just tells you right there that he finishes races only two top tens that's fine 26 10 place differential points sign me up for it uh starting 36 that's good jesse inua i think a lot of people will play him from a starting position but and i know he looked fast in, in practice but i just don't believe it i know he luck box and finished pretty high uh in a plate race last year but this guy and, and I love the team. And I love the story. It's he is trying to build this one. I believe Emmett Smith uh, put some money into it. They're trying to develop it as a as a minority run team. And they've got a lot of um, great things going on. But there were a lot of times last year where he was so slow he couldn't qualify that he had to have Jesse Weatherman or not whether Kyle Weatherman come in and run the car in order to qualify. And you never even knew like who was going to run the race because, and I wish DK would put both of them in the player pool every single week. And I started to think they started to do it towards the end of the season because Jesse would be in it. Then Kyle would run the race or Kyle would do the qualifying and then Jesse would want one race. So Again, he's getting more experience. It is Daytona. Anything could happen, but he's a GPP just because I just haven't seen the speed out of this team or out of him as a driver. Um, and I'm not sure that the equipment is fundamentally sound enough to make it the full race, 
but let's we'll see what happens and then jeremy Kleinman, he won the race over um in the summertime again there were a lot of calamity and stuff that happened for him to look at that high up i mean tate fulgerman won in the truck race like you've had some really bizarre winners at these plate tracks just because of like all the chaos that ensues and them making it towards the end so it's a war of attrition more than it is of uh, a test of skill but jeremy Kleinman is a good driver he i really respect him as a one team um owner driver operator family and i think he's gonna be probably one of the most popular guys here ultra chalk just because he's got no place to go up um with place differential and even if he wrecks and finish dead last it doesn't matter because you um aren't going to lose any points for place differential if you start like anthony alfredo starting 10th and he wrecks first and you lose uh you know 28 place differential points so talking about teams i know we did it a little bit here but like i said if you're doing gpp stacks junior motorsports all four of those and then i would put in a couple other chevys you probably can't get both childress ones in so i'd look for some uh cheaper Chevys towards the back to try to mix in with them to get the place differential because a lot of them are starting up front. Uh, I said, take the RCI and the big machine guys. I mean, it's going to be very, very risky because like you need them to actually nail it and not lose any place differential points at GPP. I wouldn't play that in anything high dollar, like maybe the $4 Chrome horn or like the dollar one at the most just because they're starting way too far forward but i think you know the gibbs cars with the toyotas if you can get them together like nemechek uh snyder and smith and then fill in with the sam hunt guys grella and parker chase and then pick another car to round it out then i, I think that's definitely a good also if you want to take an off um brand one and go with the colleague cars then, uh, you know, I think that's something that will be um, not as popular. And then, you know, if you want to go with the Fords, um, it's especially like the Stuart Haas and Ryan Sieg ones, um, I put them together. I wouldn't worry about like sprinkling and trying to finish it off with like a green light or Emmerich Gase. I just don't or maybe Brett Moffitt if you if it fits with the salary if you can get um Brett Moffitt with the Stuart Haas ones and then sprinkle in some of the Ryan Sieg ones uh, I wouldn't play Joe Graff Jr. um I mean it's, it's your money if you want to do the full forward lineup even if it fits salary wise I haven't looked at that so that's pretty much what I got I want to um, get this video out to you because it's almost four o'clock so hopefully I'll get it up by like um, at least give you an hour to uh, view it before lock I uh, should have the NASCAR one up overnight so that should be ready to go we usually have more lead time on that one also so appreciate the watches you know both um, a truck video almost got 300 views yesterday which was awesome really appreciate that it's great to be back really excited to be doing this and uh, be doing it this season so I hope to hook up with TK to do um, the racing video for Cup tonight. And then, you know, looking for, uh, got some other people lined up potentially to do some uh, Mega and Friends um, shows to throughout the season, just so you're not listening to me all by myself, just talk about this stuff. And, and you know, when you have more people on air, you, you get more um the fact checking goes easier sometimes because it's hard to remember like who raced for who throughout the years and, and stuff like that. And I don't want to stop and, and look it up. I, I put as many notes as I can in my sheet here to be prepared for these videos. But um, oh, one final note here is uh, Dexter Saley, Timmy Hill, Alex Lab, Josh Balicki and Ryan Vargas and Garrett Smithley, these red guys with bomb did not make it into the race. So um, please don't play them. And just a reminder, you can sign up for a free week of NASCAR and FSI DFS. The information is on the corner there. And after that, it's like $10 a week, $75 for a season. It's like really, really cheap. Um, all races, you cover truck Xfinity cup um, for you, give you cores, uh, my sheets and, there's gonna be times where there's not gonna be physical time enough to make a video in between qualifying and um just with like life and the, the time frame and and you know my career and stuff it, it's just hard to produce a video and then get it out in time before the race starts so that's why you know it's beneficial to be able to come into our fsi discord and all the information will be there you know for you to help you out so appreciate you watching 
um if you the videos help you the best thing you can do for us is give us a like um share with your friends uh so we got some more subscribers almost up to four thousand by the end of nascar and mlb season which i'm excited that's coming up soon uh we'll do tons of videos for that hope to get up to five thousand subscribers that's the goal for the year so appreciate you watching if you have any questions hit me up at twitter at mega 31 or leave them in the comments below and uh good luck in your contest remember Go light, don't use all your salary, play cars from the back, and we'll see you next time.